Hey everybody. So in part two, we talked about vitamin D tests, blood levels, daily dosage, and cod liver oil. If you haven't seen part one and two, please go back and watch those first before continuing. So a short recap, remember, the optimal blood concentration for vitamin D that we are shooting for is between 40 and 60 nanograms per milliliter. We also want to take between 10,000 and 20,000 international units per day to get to that concentration and stay there. Lastly, we want to take at least 100 micrograms of the vitamin K2 for every 10,000 international units of vitamin D. So in this video, we will discuss other vitamin D supplements outside of cod liver oil. So depending on the brand, we can get about a thousand international units or more from one tablespoon of cod liver oil. While it is a great natural option, it is not necessarily the best option for high dosing up to 10,000 international units or more per day. We would need to take 10 tablespoons to get 10,000 international units when we can get that same amount in one capsule of a vitamin D supplement. Also, please don't take that much cod liver oil. I'm just telling you this purely for example purposes so that we can compare. So let's get into it. So remember I told you there were two forms of vitamin D to make a mental note and we come back to it later. Well now it's later. So the first type is vitamin D2 or ergocalciferol and the second type is vitamin D3 or cocalciferol. So back to our flow chart. With food, cod liver oil, and vitamin D supplements, we skip the top part of the chart. We take it by mouth, it goes through our digestive tract, then to the liver for activation. But now we have another issue. Remember, in part one, I told you that if you have gastric bypass or any type of gut issues, indigestion, acid reflux, you can have difficulty absorbing vitamin D. This is the main reason why taking higher dosages of 10,000 international units or more is safe because our bodies are not absorbing the entire dose. We'll talk a little more about that later in the video, but keep that in mind. So if you're going to be taking a vitamin D supplement, I need to explain the difference between D2 and D3. So vitamin D2 is mainly made synthetically. It comes from plants and fungus grown under a UV light. When clinical studies were done on D2, they did not find the same benefits that you get from taking D3. It is not associated with a decreased mortality rate or death rate benefit that you get from taking D3. D2 is less expensive, but you need to take a whole lot more of it to see results. So the cost benefit is not what you think. So vitamin D3 is the form that comes from the sun, from food and cod liver oil. The D3 supplements that you will buy at the store are made from lanolin, which is typically sourced from sheep's wool. The majority of clinical studies are done on D3, and what they found is that it works five times faster in the body, it is less toxic, and it is more stable in the body as compared to D2. So when you're looking for a supplement, you want to buy D3 because it is the most similar to the vitamin D that comes from the sun. And the crazy thing about this is doctors almost exclusively prescribe D2 instead of D3 and without adding vitamin K2 with it, even though all the clinical research says that they should be doing the exact opposite. That is why it is good to know these things for yourself. Also, go back and watch the video I made on supplement quality before you buy anything so that you do not waste your money on cheap store-bought vitamins that are more fillers, preservatives, and a bunch of other mess than actual vitamins. Then you're wondering why your cute little gummies and whatever else don't work. So now that we know which form of vitamin D we are looking for, let's talk a little more about the form of vitamin K2 we need. Quick recap, I do not recommend you take vitamin D on its own, always take it with vitamin K2. Remember, the more vitamin D that is in your blood, the more your body absorbs calcium and it needs a place to go. 
Vitamin K2 escorts the calcium to where it needs to go and binds it to the bone. What you don't want is calcium floating around and depositing in your soft tissues, arteries, or causing kidney stones. But that is not a reason to be afraid of vitamin D or the higher dosages of vitamin D. Just make sure you take your K2. Also, if you're drinking enough water, at least two and a half liters per day, you shouldn't have to worry about calcium deposits such as kidney stones. And that's really only a little more than half a gallon. You should be drinking that much water per day whether you're taking vitamin D or not. The best natural sources of vitamin K2 is dark green leafy vegetables, grass-fed eggs, butter, cheese, liver, and fermented foods. There are several types of vitamin K2. I won't go into a lot of detail about that, but the type you get in supplements is MK4 and MK7. MK7 has greater bioavailability than MK4. All that means is that more of MK7 is absorbed in the body as compared to MK4, so you can take smaller dosages of it. So when looking for a K2 supplement, you want to buy vitamin K2, MK7. There is absolutely nothing wrong with MK4. You just need to take more of it to get a similar effect. You can make things a whole lot easier on yourself by just buying a combined vitamin D K2 supplement. But I'm going to go through an example to show you exactly what to look for. Okay, so first of all, I am not endorsing this product. I don't know anything about the quality of it. I have never used it myself. I'm just showing it because it is a good example. That is all. So the first thing I notice when I look at this label is that it is a vegetable capsule. That's a plus because you want to avoid capsules made from pork gelatin. Secondly, I notice it is made with D3, which is the form of vitamin D we want to take. And it meets the minimum dosage requirements we want to take of 10,000 international units per day. It is also made with MK7, the form of vitamin K2 we want to take. And it meets the minimum dosage requirements of at least 100 micrograms of vitamin K2 for every 10,000 international units of vitamin D. Then it has magnesium, which is also good for vitamin D metabolism. And I'll go over that next. Lastly, it is made with both medium chain triglycerides and ox bile. Remember I told you earlier in the video that our bodies don't absorb the entire dose of vitamin D, so these additions can help us absorb more. Medium chain triglycerides is just fat. This is a good thing to include in the supplement because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin and we can increase the absorption of it by taking it with fat. Ox bile or bile salts assist with digestion, so it helps those with no gallbladder or gut problems to increase absorption of vitamin D. So all in all, this is a great example of what to look for. Your supplement does not have to include everything listed here to work. It doesn't, I am not saying that. For example, if your supplement is not made with triglycerides, don't sweat it. Just take it with a meal that contains fat, problem solved. Okay, so let's go back and talk about magnesium for a second. It works similarly to K2 and that it also keeps calcium from depositing in your soft tissues, kidneys, and joints. So it works together with vitamin D as well. And since we are increasing our vitamin D intake, we could potentially be depleting our magnesium stores. Therefore, we need to make sure we're getting enough through our diet or supplementation. Consuming at least seven cups of dark green leafy vegetables per day will help you get the magnesium you need because they are very rich in magnesium. Certain nuts are as well. I would highly suggest you go back and watch the video I made on Black Americans, diabetes, and high blood pressure because it goes into more detail about how to get the seven cups of vegetables per day, and I won't be reteaching that here. If you want to take a supplement, stay away from magnesium hydroxide, sulfate, and carbonate. I would recommend magnesium glyconate, tarate, or malate. You can use magnesium citrate, 
But in my experience, it's more likely to cause a laxative effect. And I just prefer the quality of the other forms. And as always, if you don't want to do the research to find a quality brand, I have a recommendation for you. This is the vitamin D that I use. It's vitamin D3 K2 drops. I prefer this because number one, I don't have to remember to take K2 separately, it's all in one. Number two, I prefer the drops over capsules or tablets because it's an oil formulation, which is better for absorption. Remember, ideally you want to take vitamin D with fat, so in this case, it's an oil. That's also another reason why cod liver oil is a great option for vitamin D because it is high in omega-3 fatty acids. Overall, this is just a very convenient option for me. I can put my drops in my pre-workout drink in the morning and then I'm done for the day. If you have kids, you can put a drop or two in your juice or something and they won't even know the difference. Lastly, I need to mention that this formulation does use MK4 instead of MK7, which is why you'll notice it has 200 micrograms of K2 for every 1,000 international units of vitamin D, which is more than the recommended 100 per 10,000. So the dose has been adjusted for the fact that you need to take more MK4 to have an effect. So this is still a very good product. I may switch in the future to something else that has MK7, but I've honestly been using this stuff for years and have had good results. So I really don't see the point of changing, at least not right now, especially considering it's pharmaceutical quality and it has a low price point. And most importantly, I feel confident recommending it to y'all because I do take it myself. I'm not a fan of recommending things that I haven't or would not try on myself. So if you are interested in this product, as always, the link will be in the description box. But that is it for part three. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. And to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Shalom.